Okay, so Frank was unhappy because we were updating every single state uh, in, the itera in each iteration, and we were going to have to do an infinite number of iterations. And infinity times every single state in the whole universe is a big number. So people have invented a whole bunch of algorithms to not do all that work all the time. And we're going to talk about a bunch of them. Um, the first one that we'll talk about today um, is called prioritized sweeping. And it's extremely intuitive. What it says is, um, remember that the Bellman updates are pulling the value function. They're like regressing the value function back through the transition function. So you're, you're looking ahead one step at the rewards you'll see in the future and pulling those back to, to, to a state. And we were just talking about being able to stop early if the biggest update to any state was, to any value was small. So clearly, it's the states where there's, there are big changes to the value function that we should be concentrating on. If we can get those, the values of those states right, then our loss is going to be small. So prioritized sweeping says, don't go and update every single state. Only update, we should update first those states whose values are changing a lot. So um, concentrate updates on states whose values have changed. So we keep a queue. We keep actually a priority queue of, of states that have just been updated. And you pull off a state off the priority queue. So let's say S comes off our priority queue. So OK, now we're going to update state S. Um, so we go and do a Bellman update for S. So we go to S's successors and look at the current use for those successors and pull it back through the transition function and choose the optimal action and use the reward. And now we have a new value for the value function at S. Um, we've now updated S, so its priority becomes 0. And now all the states that S might affect go on to the queue. And their priorities are set to the maximum of either their current priority or the, uh, the, the, um, the amount by which they depend on S. Um, there's a typo here. This should be S prime A S. Uh, and this delta should be a gamma. And that t hat should be t. Uh, but the max a is correct. Um, oh, great. Good. OK, well, that's correct then. Yes. OK, so this is how much s changed. So the most that s prime could change would be delta times the probability of ending up in s. Right? Um, so yeah, so beautiful, actually. So that's correct. Ah, oh, thank goodness. But this still should ought to be s here. This ought to be not, s, not a s prime, but a comma s. Um, that tick should be a comma previous. Um, so, so this way, the, the urge to update is percolating back to those states that have the potential of changing a lot. So it makes, it, it makes enormous amounts of sense. Um, we're only updating the states that actually change. So that's a huge improvement over value iteration. I mean, it's not uncommon for priorities sweeping to be like hundreds of times faster than value iteration, than plain old vanilla value iteration, even though you have to keep this frickin' priority queue all the time. Is there a way of bound how much better it is? I have no idea. Bound how much better it is. For, uh, uh, Can you know it is at least or at most this much better? That's really hard. I don't think so. I mean, first of all, it depends on how efficiently you're, you can update these priorities um, as far as the actual CPU time of running it. Um, someone had a paper once where they, they totally they destroyed value iteration. They destroyed prioritized sweeping by doing their value iteration in an extremely clever, extremely fast way. Um, that was very depressing for me because I love value iteration. 
I mean, not prioritize sweeping, rather. I love prioritize sweeping. So, um, so little details can matter. Um, <sighs> bounding, how bad it is. It seems intuitive that it ought to be lowering this value faster than plain value iteration. Because it's concentrating on where the big updates are happening. So the next, so, so, um, so the potential update at any location ought to be shrinking faster than it would, per, than it would uh, by value iteration. Because value iteration is going to spend a lot of its updates on states that aren't changing at all. And prioritized sweeping is going to be spending all its updates on states that are changing. So the maximum change should decrease faster in prioritized sweeping. But do I have a proof? No. Um, all I can say is like this would lead you to believe that it would do a better job. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I can't, I can't vouch for that. There's also uh, one big problem with prioritized sweeping. There's something that's being totally ignored here. If you're trying to find the value of every state, then clearly this is going to decrease the updates. I mean, this is going to uh, improve your value function the fastest. But why would that might not actually be what we want to do? Make sure that we learn the value function at every state as quickly as possible. Could there be states where we don't actually give much of a hoot about what their value is? What if there's like extremely small probability we would ever go there? I mean, I'm kind of interested in like, okay, how good is the food at Stillings after all? Like, but the chance <laughs> that I'm actually ever going to eat there? Like, I'm never over in that part of campus at lunchtime, ever. So like, I'd kind of be interested in knowing what my value function would be if I were like about to dig into a plate of Stillings food, but Philbrook is Philbrook is so much closer. I whenever I'm going to actually eat in a dining hall, I go there, like guaranteed. Okay, with probability 0.9999, I go there. Maybe there's some teeny weeny little non-zero probability. So I did actually once I visited someone who had an office like night next to Stillings. So I was in that area like once. It's been like five years I've been at UNH, and I, I did go over there once. So that's non-zero, but it's very small. So why update my value function in states, parts of the state space that are reachable but only with tiny, weeny little probability? If a state is not anywhere close to the states I would visit when following a good policy, why update it? And that's being totally ignored here. But isn't it just going to stick them on the end of the priority queue and not really pay attention? No, as long as they're getting updated, this has nothing to do with um, the probability of reaching it from the initial state. But because the, because the probability is so small to go there, the utility is going to be small? And so no, 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 no. The probability, so, so this is taking into account t, which is how rapidly I get, how, what's my probability of getting to s from s prime? Um, but what's my probability of being at s prime? From the initial state, I mean, this this is this is like given that I'm at s prime, it, it, s zero is not taken into, into account here. Like this is going to update the value of my getting a haircut as a three year old in China, even though I have like no probability of going to that state. So s zero is being ignored here. This is not like a heuristic search algorithm that starts at the start state and looks to see what you can reach. So we're updating, we're like any state could get on here. Um, so that's unfortunate. The other major type of reinforcement learning algorithm is called policy iteration. Um, and let me see if we have time to talk about policy iteration. Uh, I'm just going to introduce it very briefly. So we've been doing value iteration, which is all about learning the value function. And the idea is once we know the value function, then we just behave greedily. 
We just take whatever action maximizes the immediate value I get. Because the value function is this omniscient, all-seeing, perfect, has backups from infinity function that tells us the true expected reward we'll get. So that's one approach to MDPs, is you learn the value function and behave greedily according to the value function. Policy iteration is a, is a different point of view. Um, policy iteration says, look, all I'm trying to do is find the right policy. Right? All I'm trying to do is get the right policy. So once I've found the right policy, I don't really, the values are actually useless to me. What I care about is the policy. So, um, the best way to explain this. Um, uh, since the slide has the algorithm on, I'll just give you the algorithm. Um, so start off with some arbitrary policy, pi, that might even suck. Um, compute the optimal value function for all states, assuming you operate according to that policy. And this is actually pretty quick, because you know what? If I know exactly what uh, policy I'm following, then um, we don't have this max anymore because we know what action we're doing. So we no longer have the max. So this equation is now actually linear again. So if I know the policy, it actually is a series of linear equations and I can just call my matrix friends and uh, they solve the problem for me. So this is actually not too quick, I mean not too slow. Um, given pi, compute the value for all states, assuming I act according to the policy. Then, given my value function, calculate my policy by one step look ahead. And do that until the policy doesn't change. And uh, just like with the Bellman equations, it turns out that, um, that when you get to an equilibrium of the policy, that's actually the optimal policy. Yes, that's true. Uh, the number of iterations is bounded by the number of policies. Which is a little less scary than infinity. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, although, you know, value iteration on a computer with floating point, you know, you're always improving the value function at every step. So you are bounded by the number of different floating point numbers you can represent. Okay. So if, you, if you're not scared of large finite numbers, then... I mean, that is true. <laughs>